Howdy, I'm Matt and in this episode I'm going to be sharing with you something which you may have never seen before. No! Andy loves man! That is the wheel of doom! <laughs> Oh, what the f have you done? Whoa! <laughs> Get out! Don't, no, See, it's nothing, not going to work. Nothing to see here. <laughs> So let me just set the circumstances here. I'm here working on the Ranger uh, 1600, and the thing is, is I, on one wing, I have a crossfire receiver. There we go. Uh, one of the little micro, one of the nano ones up there in the wing. Uh, and that little receiver is great. You get a breakout board, and then you're able to get four uh, PWM channels out of the device. However, we obviously need more than that uh, for the, the actual model itself if we include extra functions such as camera switching, pan and tilt uh, and ending cup to basically use all the 12 channels which were available to us. However, the thing is, is that the vector, which you can see here, which is the flight controller, needs S-Bus in. So one of those outputs, of the, the only four which we had on there, needs to be S-Bus to go to the vector. And that's the thing, is to release ourselves to be able to get hold of the other 12 or in, maybe you're using an X8R or an L9R uh, and you want to get the whole 16 channels available to you, is the thing is, is that you're going to need a device just like this, which is an S-Bus to PWM converter. And these are really, really cool and super cheap. So with that said, let's zoom ourselves in and take a closer look. So let's get ourselves straight in and you can really see, wait for that to calm down from wobbling, it is very, very, very small. And that's the thing, it's lightweight because it needs to be lightweight uh, because it's going to be in our models. And the way which I'm going to be using this is that I've got S-Bus coming from my model anyway uh, and that's going to go straight in as normal into the vector. However, one of the channels, which in my case is channel 4, I've set up as being S-Bus out uh, on the receiver uh, and as such what I'm going to take then take is a wire from the wing across and then I'm going to plug it in to this little device here. So if we take a closer look, if perhaps that will focus for us, fantastic. So you'll see S-Bus in, so this first, the second one up from the bottom, so go one, two, up from the bottom, and you'll see S-Bus in. Now we could daisy chain this and then pass the S-Bus on to the vector, however, just from a practical point of view, I don't normally suggest that because uh, if the connector comes loose on this device, well, worst case, it'll be my FPV camera switcher uh, and pan and tilt, which doesn't work uh, as compared to the vector not working, which is vitally more important. That's why it has the dedicated line in. Now you'll notice above the, the other uh, pins above the first two uh, are the uh, PWM outputs. So this is really cool. So maybe you've got an X8R receiver or maybe even a D4R2 receiver from FR Sky, which has only got four PW, PWM channels out. Is that this is how you can get at the other channels and it's very very simple because this device just automatically detects whether it's SBUS or PWM. Uh, sorry, PPM uh, in, uh, and you just press that little button on the top with your finger so that you can then switch from channels 1 to 8 through to channels 9 to 16 on these output pins here. Now one little thing which you could go wrong with uh, is that just to make you aware when you've got this on its side, if we've now focus, uh, is that the bottom rail is, when it focuses, there we go, the bottom rail is your ground, then the middle is your positive, so that's your 5 volts, and the top row is where your signal is coming from. <laughs> Don't ask me how, uh, but uh, I learned that the hard way, as you can imagine. Uh, and it's, very, it's just such, and again, they cost 7 or $8, and in this instance, so if we go and zoom ourselves all in or out, as the case may be, so let's go with that now in our knowledge that we know that this can split out the extra channels is that the way which I'm going to be using mine is my transmitter is set up 
So uh, we have uh, S bus coming across to the receiver. Now in channel, and, and the way in which the receiver is set up from the transmitter is that channels one through to eight are your traditional ones. So, uh, so you've got all your four channels. Uh, and then we also have a couple of switches as well. Some mode, sub mode switch for the vector. And then I've got gain as well, which takes us up to seven, I think. Uh, and then in short, uh, what was it, eight? and nine are set up for link quality and RSSI. So that's getting pumped out on channels uh, eight and nine on the receiver. Uh, and then 10, 11, and 12 are pan and tilt, which are the two little uh, buttons on the right-hand side of my transmitter, which is in here, but I've got little uh, potentiometer switches on my transmitter. Uh, and then channel 12 is gonna be the FPV switcher, which is a different device which I've got, I had here, oh, there it is, there we go is a separate switcher unit, uh, and I'll, I'll discuss these in a separate video, but for now, just imagine that we have the channel going in there, and it's able to flick us between the two video cameras, so our two FPV cameras, so maybe I've got a camera on the nose, and then maybe I've got a camera on a pan and tilt, or we could have a downward facing camera, or we could have a rear facing camera, or something like that. Uh, that extra channel allows us, which comes in our input here, allows to change our output, so we can have two, and in some instances, three, or even four different FPV TV cameras uh, running off uh, one install. So yeah, very, very simple. Well, that we'll discuss those in a later date. Coming back to our topic. So the way which I've got this set up is that we've got S bus which comes straight through on channel one from my receiver into the vector. That's what that wire there is. Then what I've got is on channel four of my receiver uh, unit over there. Uh, so output four on the actual little receiver in the wing is I've got another S bus which is then gonna come into here and then that's what I'm gonna use to power the servo for the pan, the tilt, uh, and also uh, for the FPV camera switcher because the reason why I need to do that, use this device with the vector, is that while we've got two auxiliary outputs, you can't map them to anything useful or bugbear which I've had with the vector for two years or more. There's an old video which I did on that, which was a feature request which they've never actually incorporated. But the thing is, is that do they really need to incorporate it? Not really, it would be nice if it was part of the vector package, but in reality, little devices like this, which cost peanuts, do enable us to get into the other PWM channels for maybe doing pan and tilt, for example, uh, or FPV camera switches. So yeah, very, very expensive, inexpensive parts, uh, and it is a very cheap way, uh, instead of maybe stringing to X, I believe you can, the X8Rs, you can string them together so that you get all the other channels available to you. Uh, this costs a fraction of the price, and you, uh, I've used these before. If I think about the Vortigon, is that I had a crossfire receiver in the wing, which it only had four channels, but I wanted more channels. Uh, and then all I did was just plug in the, uh, make that output S bus, and then just plug that in there. And then I had a whole raft of channels one through to eight uh, in PWM. So yeah, very, very simple and inexpensive tool. Uh, and it's literally a simple swapping from one to eight, uh, click on that, uh, and then you'll get your channels nine to 16. I'm assuming that your receiver pumps out, uh, or your train pumps out uh, full 16 channels with me with the crossfire is only up to 12. Now I'm sure some of you are going to ask well Matt if I've got S bus coming out of that receiver but I want all 16 channels does that mean that I need two of these and your answer is of course yes you do. So what would you have is your S bus connection coming into here so that was the S bus in that was the second pin up from the bottom that way round that was the second pin up and then what would you do what you then do is get a mail to mail connector server extension wire with the mail to mail connectors and then daisy chain the next one in so that this one you'd set up as channels one to eight for a PWM output and then on the other one you'd press that button uh, and then you would then get channels nine to sixteen uh, and just think what you could do with 12 channels, let alone 16 channels, especially within an FPV model like this. Um, yeah, exciting times. So there you go, there was me, literally, I was just opening this package, about to use this, and you may have never seen one of these before, and it's a tool in circumstances like this, which is completely invaluable, because I can now have my Eagle Tree Vector flight controller, and I can have PAN, and I can have tilt, 
and I can have an FPV camera switcher as well, which I am extremely happy about because I'm going to have probably, a, well, I'm definitely going to have a camera at the nose, maybe one on pan and tilt as well, but there's also, I've got a no, that little board which I mentioned there uh, is that well, we will look at that in a later episode so if it's your first time here don't forget to subscribe because the next video could be about this one which is the FPV camera switcher um, but I know that I've got another board which does freeway camera switching uh, so that I can have a forward facing one, I can have one on pan and tilt so it moves around as we're flying uh, and then maybe a backwards facing camera so I can see whoever's chasing me uh, behind as well so look out for that in a later episode and it's all going to be made possible by a S-Bus to PWM converter. So with that said, for myself, Matt, I sincerely hope, hope that open your eyes to what the potential is. Don't ever feel you're somewhat limited by your flight controller because where there's a will, there's a very inexpensive tool which can help you. Oh, and by the way, to help you, I'll put a link to these down in the video description for you for 100% clarity. Uh, they are, they are going to, that link will be an affiliate link. So if you use that link, you will be supporting this channel. Remember, something which I like to be 100% clear about uh, when it comes to products like this. And remember, this was bought out of my own money and I'm using it in my own models because I think it's really good. So on that note, for myself, Matt, cheerios.